This is the WHTC Morning News with Gary Stevens and Peg McNichol on 99.7, 1450 WHTC and WHTC.com. Welcome back to the WHTC Morning News for this Tuesday, July 27th. Tuesday mornings, we have a chance to catch up with what is going on in Washington with one of the two men who represent the Lake Shore in the U.S. House. He is U.S. House Representative Fred Upton of St. Joseph. He joins us from his office in Washington via the Zoom connection. Fred, good morning. Welcome back to WHTC. Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, very uh, nice to have you with us. And uh, the U.S. House, U.S. Senate, very busy as we speak, dealing with the infrastructure bill. And right now, uh, we got more finger pointing going on than actual constructive uh, uh, work, although the problem solvers, which you are a part of, are trying to get something done. But right now, it, uh, it, there, there are some signs that there might not be a deal coming through. Well, this has always been a tough nut to crack, let's face it. And we've been working on this really since April. We're close. Uh, but getting the final, you know, they always say it's darkest, uh, you know, a, a minute before the dawn. And that's sort of where we are now. There were meetings uh, the, through the weekend and again late Monday night. Uh, I know that they're close. I know that they want to get a deal that's done because it really sets up the balance of the year. Um, if we can't get this done, uh, there, you know, it's real trouble to get maybe anything done. So uh, this is a real need. And we focused infrastructure on roads and bridges and certainly know that issue here in Michigan for sure. But uh, whether it be broadband, whether it's making sure that our electric system is uh, protected, not only against weather, but also against cyber. Uh, Michigan, we've had the water issues uh, forever. Think, think Flint. Uh, I mean, uh, these, these are some issues that we need to uh, deal with. Uh, it's funded. No, it doesn't take away from the Trump tax cuts that we saw enacted uh, back in 2017. And it's time to get across the finish line. So I, I think, I don't know that they'll get an agreement today. Again, I haven't heard anything. It's early this morning. Uh, but I, I know that they're getting close and they're going to keep working. Uh, Senate more or less holds the key or does the House have a key in this as well? Well, we both had keys and it was the Problem Solvers Caucus, 58 members that endorsed, embraced uh, the framework. Actually, we initiated the framework and they took it and run, which was just fine. Uh, but we've been working with our center counterparts uh, literally uh, every day. Uh, I spend a lot of time with a number of senators uh, last week. Uh, we've got some meetings uh, today and tomorrow uh, that, that are coming together uh, for sure. But I think the plan is that if they can show that they've got the 60 votes to get this done, knowing that it has been really hard to get there, that they will then launch that, uh, they'll, they'll pass it, hopefully this week, <laughs> may bleed into next week, we'll see. And then the House would then take it up pretty much unchallenged. Uh, and uh, we would embrace it. Uh, the White House will be on board uh, for sure. They're, they've been part of the negotiations. And we may have to come back very much like what we did last year. Uh, you know, our August, our August break in the House is supposed to start on Friday. Uh, but like last year, we came back for a day or two uh, in August. And I think that's the plan. Uh, Stunny Hoyer, the majority leader, has indicated that there'd be a 72-hour notice. So stay tuned, you know, whether you drive back or, or take the plane. Uh, we might come back a week or two later to finish the job uh, to get it to the White House. Speaking about taking the plane, uh, Grant for, for the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport is uh, coming away. A nice million-dollar grant for them. Well, that's right. Um, we're going to be actually doing many of these appropriation bills uh, this week. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be voting late tonight and uh, the rest of the week. Uh, but we're back. We're allowing what we call earmarks uh, to come back. We've got new rules, uh, which we should be. They need to be fully transparent. People know what they are. Uh, it's not, not a surprise. Uh, there's a cap in terms of the number and uh, the volume uh, uh, amount. You're not going to name the airport, in this case, the Fred Upton Airport. Uh, that's, that's against the rules, even though I fly out of there a lot. Uh, you know, it's, there's no name in stuff. Uh, that, that's, that's not right. But it also has to have the support of the locals, uh, with the state and local uh, folks. Uh, so what we're planning to do with the Kalamazoo runway, we know that the airlines are going to be moving to larger planes. They need a longer runway. And so if that Kalamazoo Battle Creek Airport is going to remain viable, it's got to get there. 
And what this does, it's going to speed up the process. It's already in line, uh, but I was able to, to acquire some money in this uh, transportation bill that's up. Of course, we have, don't know what the Senate's going to do. You know, this is, this is uh, step three of like a 12-step process, but it, it's good news. And I know that the locals uh, uh, really support this effort. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> For those yeah. of us flying and out, got a little ro- longer runway in the winter. That's probably a good thing. I agree with you on that. Fred Upton, uh, we got a story from our wire service. Uh, mayors of some of the uh, larger cities, such as Chicago, New York, and Los Angeles, sent a letter mostly to the Democratic contingent in Congress uh, pressing to address immigration issues, saying a pathway to citizenship should be included in the measure for people, including dreamers. Of course, the DACA situation, uh, which was struck down by a court, is still not a final word on that. And uh, also, the uh, Democrats are trying to pass a massive bill uh, through the reconciliation would allow them to move forward, and this would be part of the the package. I know you've talked about immigration reform. Uh, let's say let's say right now the situation with the borders, with DACA and all that, uh, it's bringing this to a head. Well, I I'll confess I did not get a letter from these Democratic mates, but I've not seen it. Uh, but Congress has failed to do its job. You know, President Trump uh, some time ago wagged his finger at us and said, Congress, the system's broken. Do your job. Send me a bill that I can sign. It would include border security. That didn't happen. Uh, and so we are where we are. And a federal judge made the decision, you know, that they don't have the authority, particularly on the DACA, to continue without action by Congress. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe that it should be part of a reconciliation or a spending package. This is this is the debate that needs to be bipartisan. It needs to be initiated in both the House and the Senate. We passed a couple of bills now in the House. Senate hasn't taken action on them. Uh, but rather than fold it into some large $3 trillion package, <laughs> it ought to be on its own. We ought to, ought to do our job and the pressure ought to be there. And uh, I guess even though I didn't get the letter, maybe someone will get the message. <laughs> Good way of putting it. One final thing. Uh, you signed a resolution condemning socialism. There are many who believe that this nation is starting to go down the path of socialism. There are those who say that's not a bad path to go, most notably the independent senator from the state of Vermont. But you're on record saying, no, it, this, this is not going to work. No, it's not. Our, it's not our system. And I, you know, I, uh, um, you know, we need to build on our democracy, uh, not revert to, to something that socialism and, and stuff like that. So uh, I, I um, like to think that I'm in a strong majority of American citizens, uh, as well as colleagues in the Congress. And frankly, if, if they want to have a vote on it in the House, I know which side is going to win. <laughs> Certainly. And of course, uh, dealing with socialism and uh, the byproduct, uh, still the Cuban situation, even though that's not top of the headlines now, still there is some talk about uh, maybe uh, dealing with Cuba a little bit uh, more now that there is more unrest over what is going on in that nation. Well, you know, I've got a couple of uh, uh, native Cuban colleagues um, and they've been that I'm very close to uh, and they've been very thankful uh, for some of the actions uh, over the years uh, that I've taken. But uh, you know, what's, what's remarkable is that these folks uh, are protesting in Cuba, they're carrying the American flag. They understand what democracy is. Going back to your earlier statement here about socialism, they're carrying the American flag. They want changes. Uh, they want an economic growth. Uh, they've got ooh, terrible issues that are there. Uh, and maybe they'll see the, the fruits of what democracy can bring if they make some real changes. So. The change is from within, and that's where it's all, always got to happen. It's got to happen from the people itself. He is Fred Upton. He is the U.S. House Representative from St. Joseph. He joins us on Tuesday mornings to talk about what's going on in Washington. Fred, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And if all goes well, let's do this again next, next Tuesday morning. I'll be on my side porch. All right. Sounds great. Fred Upton, thank you very much for joining us on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.